We're here today in Berlin at the third annual plenary conference of INET. Um, and I'm here talking with uh, Professor Roger Guénery, who's one of our uh, grantees, um, for a very interesting project that he calls International Network on Expectational Coordination. Um, welcome, Roger. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> I'm very, uh, I've just been reading your grant proposal, and it's a very interesting idea to gather all of the people together who are, have critical attitudes toward the rational expectations hypothesis, all the different kinds. You, of course, have your own critique, which is, which is about the, the critique of the common knowledge uh, assumption, and that's made you a little concerned about the way we've used rational expectations models in economics. Is that right? Yes, the, the question is that all the people who are in the network uh, think that uh, the rational expectation hypothesis should be critically assessed. They have different views on uh, what they expect from the critical assessment, and they have different views on the, the way mm -hmm. to go into this uh, critical assessment. But uh, the idea of the network is to gather these people who have common interest, but in fact, they agree to disagree, and okay, uh, mm -hmm. we can expect from that some uh, uh, interesting confrontation. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned something about your concern about the balkanization of even these groups, that these groups have so far been just talking to yeah. themselves, and you want, first of all, for these different critical groups to be talking to each other. So this is interesting to me, that because, of course, for INET, you know, getting, getting people to talk to each other and cro cross, across boundaries, across silos, but I hadn't, wouldn't have thought that there was such in mathematical economics. I thought you were all speak a common language. Yes. So previously there was a kind of ideological and geographical balkanization, and this type of balkanization has been more or less destroyed by the use of a common neutral language. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, some other kind of balkanization has come up, hmm. which is a balkanization between subfields, the fact that people you know, over the last 40 years... It's about specialization? It's about specialization. Uh, it's about the fact that uh, people have uh, explored uh, broad, uh, broader and broader territories, but going into places that are more and more specific, and that they find more difficult to talk to each other. Uh, mm. They develop networks that are useful to communicate between them, but the communication between this network is not, is not good. And that's really bad because we have problems with the system as a whole, as seen in the recent crisis. And then if you want to uh, have solution for, for the, uh, that, that concerns the system as a whole, you have to, to uh, gather all the knowledge you have. Okay? So this balkanization is uh, rather bad for us, and it's bad also uh, for young people. Now you emphasize in your proposal that you want to start with the theorists, but then bring in an empirical component, and then the economic historians, and, uh, and then the practitioners, and I suppose the policy makers. So this, this stages are, it's an interesting strategy. The general idea is to, to, to allow confrontation between theorists on the one hand, on other people like uh, uh, empirical people, uh, historian, historian of economic thought, and so on. The idea is that we should have activities that are general activity, you know, that concern all the people in the network now, and there are some activities that might be special activity. For example, we might have a workshop on the uh, history or economic history and expectation, for example, uh, with uh, mm -hmm. a few people coming from the different nodes. Now, in your own education, um, it, do you have a, a broad education, or how did you get into economics? Were you did you begin as a as a mathematician who then became an economist, or were you an uh, economist who became a mathematician, or, or no. what 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 is the story? I um, am a product of the French. Uh, uh, system, elitist system of grandes écoles. So I went to, uh, I came Polytechnic. to école, école Polytechnique. After that, uh, I came to Ecole des Ponts et Chaussées. I became a civil servant. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I never constructed bridges or roads. I switched to economics uh, when I start, after just after my studies. And then I was associated with a research center which was connected with the French Commissariat du Plan, with the French administration, in fact. Mm -hmm. And I started working on uh, applied studies, like uh, how to connect uh, uh, budget, 
the, 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 the budget, which is something that takes place year by year with the objective of the plan that were five year objectives and mm -hmm. something like that. And then I came to read the uh, economic theory paper. Uh, I started uh, writing the economic theory paper and I came then to the French Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique, which is the National Center for uh, Scientific Research. So I became a full-time researcher. I, I didn't want to leave without asking you. One of the lines in your, in your proposal really intrigued me. You are speaking about the uh, reluctance of, of your fellow economists to give up rational expectations and to explore the dark continent of non-rational expectations coordination. Um, so this reluctance, it's, it's, it's an emotional thing it sounds, or, or, or is it because it's harder, the dark continent as you say? Or I think that um, it has deep roots, okay, we are, uh, our profession, okay, all schools of thought considered, okay, even the, the Marxists, uh, are much influenced by what you can call the philosophical determinism. Mm -hmm. That is uh, so important in physical science. Physical determinism, to say it briefly, that okay, when you know the initial condition, then you should know the future of the world. Okay? Mm -hmm. With rational expectation, we, we have a little bit that. If you give up rational expectation, that means that the, the world can be is less de deterministic. Okay? You, you, you give up some of the uh, power you are supposed to have on the world, okay? you, mm. it, it makes it less predictable and uh, there is strong reluctance to go into that, That's why, uh, also because it's difficult. But as you say, this is, this is the way the world is, and so... Yes, that's my, as, my belief, as a yes. Social, uh, as a social science, it's, it's, it seems that you're in fact invigorated to be exploring this new this new tar dark continent. No, I think it, it's exciting in the same way. Uh, it, 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 and I think that the, the, this network would be useful for that. It, it, it's also dangerous. Okay? It's dangerous for young people because it's mm. a new territory. There is reluctance f from the profession for reasons that are very easy to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can come into that, which is a risky territory, only if you feel that you are not alone. Well, it's a fascinating strategy for creating new economic thinking. We're really happy that you're taking this on and, and pushing forward the frontiers of new economic thinking. Good to be with you today, Roger. Thank you.